POC Network here with another unboxing, this time coming from a company spelled as X, G-I-M-I. And this is their Halo projector, which is a 1080p Android projector, uh, which means it has Android inside, like your phone, unless you're an iPhone user. But Android inside, which means it has all your favorite apps in there that you could have access to. And an all in a native 1080p projector, which is important, native 1080p. So it isn't a 720p projector with a stretched out image or anything like that. It is a 1080p projector with Android. And it's capable of projecting up to a 300 inch display. Now, of course, it's not gonna compete with your bigger projectors or anything like this because this is a portable projector. This is actually portable, portable, meaning it's got a battery inside. You can actually pick it up, walk away with it and watch it outside at the beach or while you're camping and enjoy it just about anywhere. So it's a portable projector. So that's what you're paying for the ability to take it on the go. So it's not as bright because of clearly battery life. You, you, there's no way you'd be able to throw 2,700 lumens out of this thing and still be able to watch a full feature length movie. So instead, what you get is a 600 to 800 lumen range from this, which, which should be pretty good for a portable projector when you compare it to what's out there. But what's really exciting is Android. There's Android loaded inside, which means no connected device is necessary. You don't have to bring a Blu-ray player or anything like that. You don't have to connect your phone, although it does support Chromecast. It has Android inside, which means it has all of those favorite apps of yours. So Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Video, all of them are located or at least available inside this. So all you really need technically is an internet connection, Wi-Fi. So in some cases that might limit you to the backyard or something, some other area close to a Wi-Fi source, uh, maybe a store, sorry, Starbucks, but we'll throw you out there as an example. Or let's just say you just wanna move it around the house and use it anywhere you want. For anything else, you're probably gonna want cellular reception uh, where you'll be able to tether it to your phone, assuming that your provider allows you to do that and uh, it just work off your phone's connection instead, assuming you have cellular connection wherever you're at. So camping may or may not be a thing for you, but it also has USB and HDMI in, so you can feed it with another source if you must and still provide it with whatever video content you need despite wherever you are. So Wi-Fi isn't absolutely necessary, it's only if you really want full connectivity with Android. It does support Google Assistant built into it. So, you know, I mean, it's Android, so you can use your voice to control it, to say, hey, Google, and tell it to do stuff. And it supports Bluetooth as well, which means you can just use it as a Bluetooth speaker if you like, if you're not using it as a projector at any given time. And to make that even better, because why would you connect to your projector via Bluetooth for music. That's uh, kind of odd. Well, because it has two five watt speakers inside that were designed by Harman Kardon. So it should sound pretty good. Good like a nice Bluetooth speaker by Harman Kardon good, I would assume. So then you may ask, what else can this thing do? Well, it offers an auto keystone, at least semi auto keystone. It has an auto vertical keystone capability. Uh, horizontal, you'll still, it's still manual adjustment. But it does offer a rapid 10,000 point, 10,000, that is a lot, 10,000 point autofocus, which happens the moment you turn this on. So you just turn it on, it automatically autofocuses itself for you. So you don't have to. I mean, it's probably a manual option in there if you want to play around with the focus. Maybe it doesn't get it right all the time, who knows. But 10,000 points, that's, if it doesn't get that right, then something's wrong. 10,000 points is a lot of samples to, to go off of to get the perfect image with. So that sounds pretty hopeful. So you got auto focus, semi auto keystone, and features that are pretty decent for a portable projector. I mean, this is something you'd find in brands like Panasonic when you're spending a little bit more money on <laughs> more commercial style or just high end projectors. So that would probably point to why this thing is $799. So yes, it's not super affordable. It is for somebody who's willing to spend the cash on something like this. It is a higher end uh, portable projector. So $799, if that's in your comfort zone, it offers a lot of features and options. And we'll, we'll actually give you some demo footage here in a moment so you can actually see what it looks like in action. But the final spec I wanna throw out there is battery life, because that's the most important thing. I mean, it's battery life, it's, or it's portable, so you want a high battery life out of this thing. 
uh, you get up to two to four hours worth of video watching and up to eight hours with music. So with music, this thing will last you a very long time for if you're just using it as a Bluetooth speaker, this Harman Kardon Bluetooth speaker. If you're using it for video, you're gonna get two to four hours and that's gonna depend on what you have it set to, lumen range and everything else. Of course, if it's a, if it's a really dark movie, you, it's probably gonna last a bit longer. If it's a really bright movie, like a lot of light scenes throughout the whole movie, then you're gonna have less battery life and you might be able to take the brightness, you should be able to take the brightness down, just like any TV or projector. So that could also save you on your battery life as well. But regardless, you should get at least two hours worth of juice out of this thing. So it should get you through almost any full length feature movie, just not, you know, Avengers probably. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna open it and see what's on the inside, what it looks like. And then we're gonna have some uh, footage, some demo footage for you so you can see what it looks like again, like I mentioned, in action. And then you'll go to the website at pocnetwork.net where we're gonna have a full review about this later on and tell you what we think or don't think about it, what we like or don't like about it. <laughs> so that will be available soon and we will provide that information in the description so you have links to everything later on. So first thing we come across here is register and activate your XGIMI warranty. And you have a frequently asked questions sheet with multiple languages here, just two languages maybe. Nope, multiple languages. And uh, it just uh, tells you, please upgrade the operating system first and you receive the device, it's just such a, it's kind of a golden rule. You, anytime you buy into any te technical device, you want to upgrade the firmware or the software that's in there before you start using it or more importantly, judging it. And now the, it's, I, I gotta point this out, the, the box is small for a portable projector. Now imagine if this had a handle on it and just carry it around. And it's, it's got a little weight to it, but it's not too bad. I mean, for what it offers, it's pretty decent. But then it gets better because it's even smaller than that. So the box is just grossly oversized for this tiny little projector. So you think you're getting a decently small sort of projector here. And uh, no, no, you are getting a small projector. <laughs> And uh, this thing's nice. And it's what, what's really cool is, you know, half the weight is still in the box. So you got your accessories in there. Uh, the other half is here. So it's, it's really not that heavy. Uh, you see Harman Kardon on the sides here, on um, both sides. And then the speaker grills uh, grill on the front too. It looks like, just catching the reflection there, the speakers are indeed on the side not so much on the front. So it's just aesthetics, you know, to make sure that the pattern continues all the way around the projector. Uh, and that is, it looks like it, it's just plastic. It's a silver gray, grayish plastic. And then the top is a black and the bottom is a black as well. Uh, the bottom, we have a little latch here. You just flip this up and it just looks like, looks like that's just your serial number underneath, hidden for some reason. I thought it was gonna be a battery. Like maybe it's a pull-out battery or something, but nope, battery is definitely inside and it cannot be removed. So it's inside, can't be removed. Charges from the DC input right here on the back, which is also important to point out. Uh, when I mentioned two to four hours for video and eight hours for music, I'm referring to battery life, of course. Uh, it has a DC plug, so you can still plug it into the wall and use it as a normal projector. So you can watch this thing for 12 hours if you want. But on battery life, that's when you run into those hour restrictions. But you have your lens right here in the front. It's a nice small lens here. Uh, plus you have an autofocus little, just looks like a smaller lens here, I'm guessing. It's um, some kind of a sensor that's used to determine the focus of the screen to make sure to match, you know, its own content, what it, what it the content's supposed to look like to what it's actually seeing. So this is projecting, this is watching. And the top has a little piece of just protective plastic on there. And you can see the company's logo right here. Plus you have three touch sensitive buttons here. They don't press down or anything like that. They're, they're actually touch sensitive. So you have a play pause button right here in the middle. And then you have a volume up and volume down that's on the sides right here. And the lens is interesting because the, the lens looks like it's kind of tucked downwards a little bit. So it's definitely designed to shoot upwards a little bit. So it's not straight on or anything like that. So you're going to be you know, sitting it on the surface and shooting upwards. And then the back side of the unit has all of your inputs. So you're going to have HDMI right here. We have USB, you have your DC input, you have a headphone jack. So if you are, you know, listening to in a quiet environment and you don't want to bug anybody else, you can 
just plug in a pair of headphones here and get some stereo sound going out. And then you have your power button. The bottom side has a threaded, uh, just a, an input right here. So if you want to put it on some kind of a tripod or something, you can. So you don't, in case you don't want to use a table, you want to use some kind of a tripod. It looks like just a, a general camera uh, thread. So any normal tripod should work with this thing. And again, on the bottom, you have this little flap that has a serial number underneath. But that is it for the unit itself. And again, it's not too heavy. I mean, it's got some weight to it. It really does. But I mean, it has a huge battery inside to give you two to four hours worth of video with. So of course, there's going to be some weight to it. Further into the box, we have two smaller boxes that contain your accessories. The first one, we have your cable, at least half of the cable, and you have a remote. So this must be a power brick of sorts. So the remote is really nice looking too. It's very simple, cheek. Uh, but let's look at the other half of the power cord first. Uh, it's a little bit better. So now you have a two piece power cable here, uh, plugs together, kind of like a laptop. I mean, it's exactly like a laptop power adapter, really, if you think about it. And again, it's used to charge it and or you can just plug it in the wall and just watch it for as many hours as you want, as long as you keep it plugged in. And then the very last item in here is your instructions, which is a user guide, which is relatively thick, but of course you're gonna have multiple different languages in there. And it's gonna walk you through using all the buttons and getting through the menus and whatnot. And then you have a warranty here that just tells you about the warranty for your product. Now, taking a look at that remote, as mentioned, I mean, it looks it looks really nice. But there is your remote. Now, it kind of reminds me of your typical kind of Roku remote. I mean, it's 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 more narrow. It's longer than a Roku remote. Yeah, but it has, you know, the, the similar layout of buttons in terms of, or at least the number of buttons. You have your power button at the top here. You have a menu button. Uh, you have a Google Assistant button. So you can use Google Assistant. And you have a settings button. You have, of course, a directional wheel with an OK button in the middle. You have a back button, home button, and then a volume up and down right here. And at the very bottom here, it looks like you have a little, just a, a little switch that goes back and forth. It switches you between volume and focus. And inside that remote is two AAA batteries. Actually, it doesn't come with a AAA battery. Sorry, for $800, they didn't include AAA batteries. So AAA batteries, two of them in the remote. It's nice, lightweight, small, tiny remote, simple to use just like any other mobile device or small device like a Roku or anything else. So there you go, the XGIMI portable 1080p Android projector. Well, let's go take a look at what it looks like. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna give you an idea of what it actually looks like with some content being fed to it. And uh, we'll see what we like about it. So let's take a look at that. So we have this connected to a screen now. The screen, uh, based on the size of the actual projection screen it's shooting at and the size of the image we're getting right now, uh, the projector is displaying at just below 125 inches, give or take, just only a couple inches. And so far, the brightness looks fantastic. Setup was an absolute breeze. Didn't take more than maybe 30 seconds to quickly get through the menu. You can use your Android mobile device to really get yourself started and walk you through the process quickly. Now, it first introduced us with a firmware update, which we did get through. And Ed, you saw some of those screens there just a second ago. Now we are in the main menu. Uh, firmware's updated, which restarted. The clarity of the image just in the menu alone looks fantastic. This is an incredible amount of brightness coming from a tiny little projector, especially a mobile projector like this. And the, the clarity of everything on the screen is just wonderful. The color detail uh, complements the brightness as much as the brightness complements the color detail. I mean, it just the, the accuracies here are fantastic for such a small, tiny little thing. And it's fast. Uh, the menu system is nice and speedy. You're able to zip through everything pretty quickly. I mean, so far, there's not really anything to complain about. And it kind of puts weight onto that price tag, uh, giving you really a, a package of, of features here to help justify that. And now we're starting to understand more and more on, you know, again, why it's $800. And again, everything's nice and quick and fast. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna quickly plug in the USB drive. So we plugged in the USB drive and we're in the USB menu. 
it's kind of similar to a lot of these menus on these uh, projectors, but uh, this one is, it's really simple, it's user-friendly, popped us right into this. It, as you saw, it started us off with a simple little preview screen of the thumb drive and some of the common files on there. That it, it kind of alienated specific files, like the this uh, LG New York one, it didn't. Uh, maybe it's because it's a TS file, it's hard to say. Uh, but what we're going to watch today, let's try Overwatch 8K, just to see if it plays. So this is technically just something off of YouTube that we got our hands on. Uh, Upscale is the YouTube member that uploaded this, and uh, it's an 8K upscaled version of the game Overwatch. And what you're seeing here is, I mean, it's clearly you're not looking at 8K, you're looking at 1080p, but it's an 8K file. And the file is like, a, I think, two and a half gigs, and yet it seems to be working just fine. But what you're seeing here is an 8K uh, file, native file, that's actually playing back in 1080p, and it looks really decent. There's some jitteriness on some of the lines here and there, uh, but for the most part, it's pretty smooth. Again, the quality of the color uh, is just absolutely amazing for a tiny little projector like this. The smoothness of everything, uh, the autofocus, it worked immediately as soon as we turned it on, did a great job. So focus is good, clarity is good, the brightness is good, and it's really, again, nothing to complain about. This looks like a fantastic projector, which now leads us into these speakers. Now we've listened to some music, which we can't really play back because uh, uh, I'm sure YouTube or anywhere else this video ends up is probably gonna complain if we have unlicensed music playing. But the, the music coming from the speakers, which is hard to tell what, from what you're hearing now, it actually sounds really good. You can tell that the, you know, the speakers inside of this, is, uh, they're not just your typical generic whoop de do off the shelf speakers that they got in the back warehouse somewhere they had extra of. No, this, these are Harman Kardon. They sound fantastic. They actually have a bit of lows to them, which, which is actually quite impressive. So you got good picture, you have good sound, you have a really great, I mean, just going back to the picture, crisp picture, really nice colors, and a really good focus, again, autofocus. And just to touch back on the keystone correction of the projector, the keystone correction, again, it's vertical, is automated, horizontal, is manual, but I mean, everything just can set up flawlessly. We had to move it around a little bit on its stand here to get a good kind of a, a balance. And even so, it's still not 100% straight. We just kind of roughly threw it up really quickly just to see what we got out of this. I mean, so far, this is looking really good. And just to switch up the files here, I, I went ahead and clicked on that TS file and it did play it. Thank you, VLC player. I mean, that's probably the biggest help right there. We have VLC and player installed. We put that in there in the very beginning once we we're going through the introduction of setting up the projector. Uh, this is just, I, again, this is kind of a, a, uh, a clash of brands here since this is a demo video by LG of all things. But uh, this XGI MI projector is doing an amazing job of playing it. And everything looks great. The, the file, the original file is 4K, uh, 4K TS file. And uh, so again, you're not seeing 4K on the screen here, but it looks fantastic for 1080p. I mean, there's nothing really to point out and dislike uh, for a 1080p image at this size coming from such a tiny little lens. And of course, again, this has Android, so if you have Wi-Fi, you can pull all of these movies up and watch them on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime Video and all of your favorite movie sources. You know, plug into the new Paramount Plus subscription or Disney Plus, anything you want because this is Android TV. So it has all of those apps that you typically find in Android and all of, their, just, all of them just sitting there waiting for you to be able to really just tap into all of that endless content, both video and music alike, and make use out of it. As long as you have a Wi-Fi connection, that's the only catch. So if you are camping and you don't have Wi-Fi and you don't have a way of tethering it to your phone because maybe you don't have a connection to, you know, a cellular connection on your phone, then you might be just limited to just a USB drive and whatever content you can bring with you. But again, it does have HDMI and everything else. You can plug anything you want into this thing just like a normal projector. So there you go, that is the XGIMI projector. And we're gonna have some information in the description, including links on how you can find this projector, as well as a link to the full review once we are finished with it later on at pocnetwork.net. So again, all of that information will be available in the description below. If you liked what you've seen here, don't forget to subscribe below and follow us, as well as use the comment section so we can all discuss this. What do you think about it? Do you like it? Do you have one? 
use the comment section and share your opinions. And as always, we thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time. If you want to stay on top of all the latest and greatest and or at least the gadgets we cover, remember to subscribe right here. Subscription button. Click it. You're going to want to. There's lots of videos, interviews, previews, all sorts of stuff. Button. Click it.